Hey, Pilots, Hobbs here again, this time bringing you the Predator Mech. Alright, I'm going to be giving out a lot of information here, because uh, this is a very complicated and very difficult mech to use. Just pause here for the mech stats as always. But yes, as I said, this mech is very difficult, and it is extremely complicated, so I'm going to be throwing out a lot of information pretty fast, so try to bear with me. But to keep it short and simple, if you are new, do not get this mech because it is insanely hard to pilot. Some of the best Predators I know will still tell me that they find it tough to pilot, and they've been playing longer than me, so if it's hard for them, it won't be easier for you. But, However, if you insist on learning the Predator, I'll still teach you what I can about it, but just remember that this mech is extremely tough, and if you do really bad at first, that's normal, trust me. It's, it's extremely hard to use, and it takes you a long, long time because this plays nothing like most of the other mechs. If I could even compare it, I'd say it's a cross between the Raider and the Infiltrator. And even that, that's only like halfway. But, alright, let's get into it. To quickly go over uh, that screen that you're seeing is the ability called Stalker Mode. Of course, I'll get into that a little bit later, but first things first, I want to get into the weapons. Which are the EOC Predator and the Breacher, are the first weapons that you start off on side of the Predator. I'm gonna talk about the EOC uh, Predator first though. Quickly make a synopsis about the EOC Predator. Basically it's the TOT, T T -O -T, TF2 Sticky Bomb Launcher, but you know, slightly different. Uh, what it does is that it's kind of like the, if you haven't played TF2, it's sort of like the EOC Repeater in the game. However, instead of firing like three pucks at once, it fires one puck at a time at a much more rapid pace. So, yes, it's essentially a mine launcher, and you can detonate the mines at will, as long as they're on the ground, with uh, middle mouse, like the utility. You, so, you, so essentially how this weapon can be used is that you can lay down up to eight mines at a time in a, like a tight formation around a little, uh, around a little corner or uh, in a place where you think the enemies are going to go, and you can either wait for the enemy to step on it and detonate the mines themselves, or you can hit the middle mouse and detonate it, uh, the thing yourself. And it's also good in direct in uh, combat because then you can shoot a mine and if you miss a direct hit, you can tap the middle mouse and then you can still try to go for splash damage, although that is quite mentally taxing to do it. But, you know, but it all, like all other explosive weapons, uh, it does slightly more damage if you hit get a direct hit, but each EOC Predator mine does about 60 damage, uh, you know, without the direct hit, I believe. But yeah, but it's very different from most of the other secondary weapons because it doesn't have as much burst damage as like a tow rocket. What it has is much more sustained damage, which is very, very different for a secondary weapon. So again, it's much you're not going to be as accustomed to it. But yeah, I'll probably go into a bit more detail in a little bit while when I talk about the ability. On to the primary weapon called the Breacher. This is probably something that you're not very familiar with because of how uh, complicated the Breacher is. But what the Breacher is, it's very unique. It actually, it can be charged just like the heat cannon, but uh, it actually does two different separate things when it's uncharged versus charged. The reload time on it is very long, it's two seconds at each time you shoot, which is odd for most primaries. But uh, an uncharged shot is almost like a flat cannon, except it does, it does way more damage, it's 144 damage like right on the spot. You know, uh, it, but of course that's only really good for really close range because the fall off damage and plus the spread on the breacher is pretty big. However, if you charge up the shot, it becomes like a rifle. It's almost like a little mini sniper rifle. It's a rail shot, it's a singular projectile, which can pierce through shields and other uh, mechs. And so, it's the rail shot, so you can char you can, uh, you charge up the charge up the breacher, and then you can shoot the rail gun shot. And it does 100 damage versus the 144 of the uncharged shot. So, you're trading some damage for much more range and accuracy. However, and there's actually a small tip with the Breacher, is that if you charge a shot and fire, the reload time is slightly less than two seconds. So what most Predator pilots would do is get a charge shot, fire that off, and then they can quickly get off an uncharged shot while they close in on a, while they close in on a target. So try to remember, it's kind of like a one-two combo with that. But, you know, but then using it in conjunction with your uh, EOC repeater can be quite difficult. Because, you know, you gotta be able to sh uh, because it's a shotgun, and if you want to get up close with the uncharged shots, you gotta be careful of the splash damage from uh, your uh, EOC Predator, because, you know, the splash damage, not only, it'll, it'll affect your ability, but of course, you know, it'll just do damage to yourself, so that's something you gotta watch. But yes, the Breacher is an extremely powerful weapon, however, it is very unforgiving if you miss, because, like I said, the reload time is two seconds, you know, um... Uh, 
even if it's between charge shots, because by the time, you know, it takes to char fully charge a shot, well, you know, it'll be kind of longer than two seconds at that point, so. Just remember what I said, you can use a, you can use a charge shot and an uncharged shot combo for, uh, you know, two quick successive hits, you know, with the Breacher, but, yeah, it's really tough to pull off. But, yeah, we're gonna move on to the next weapon. Okay, so, the rank 3 alternate weapon that's unlockable for the Predator is the T-32 Bolt. If you don't already know how it works, go watch my Raider video for a better explanation on it, so... That way I can assume that you already know how it works, and how all the damage things, and how the charges are all. That way I can save a little bit of time and just talk about how it differs from the Breacher. And, uh, get more into about Predator-specific stuff. So yeah, if you have not seen the T-32 Bolt, or you don't know what it is, go watch my Raider video and watch the section on that. Okay, so for how it differs between, uh, the Breacher, is that the Bolt is a lot more forgiving in terms of missed shots, because it does have a lot, uh, it does have a much higher rate of fire. I mean, the Breacher takes two seconds to reload, while I think you can maybe shoot the, the Bolt, like, once every two, you know, twice every second. But, yeah, however, in place of that, you, I mean, you still have the close-range co combat capability that the Breacher does, however, the Breacher is able to be used at mid-range, but the T-32, the spread is pretty wide on it, so past, like, up, really up close, the T-32 is not going to do you much good. So, if you want to go for di more distance combat, you have to rely solely on your EOC Predator, and unless you know how to lead the mines, and, uh, you know, get them to their feet, or land direct hits from a distance, you're going to have a hard time dealing with enemies who know how to keep their distance from you while you're using the bolt. So, essentially, you trade... Uh, your versatility that the Breacher has for a much more, you know, easier to use weapon. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the difference between the Breacher and the T-32. Alright, before I mention anything else about the Predator, I want to just go over the basic playstyle, and it's probably as far as you have seen. I mean, obviously, it's very sneaky mech, and it's actually classified as a defense mech, so... Playing aggressively with the Predator is extremely hard. I mean, it can be done, but you have to know, but you really have to know how to use the EOC Predator and be able to output a lot of damage and not miss your shot. Otherwise, you know, the EOC Predator just does not have the punch that a tow rocket does, and if you're missing shots, it's very punishing. However, playing defensively, you can lay mines down, lay traps, you know, use the eight mine trap to really cripple. I mean, it'll almost, it actually, most, uh, actually, all the light mechs. All the A-Class mechs, if you get them right on top of the trap of eight mines, they're instantly dead. However, the eight mines, they don't work so well outside of the more objective games like Siege and uh, Missile Assault. Because on Team Deathmatch, there's just, like I said, there's, everyone's everywhere on Team Deathmatch. It's really chaotic. There's not going to be certain areas where people are going to frequent as much uh, on the more objective-based game modes. So, it makes it a lot harder to try to lay down those, you know, super traps that'll just, like, insta-give enemies or seriously cripple them. So, you, uh, you gotta f rely much more on cl uh, direct combat strategies inside of the Predator if you're gonna use it for Team Deathmatch, which I don't recommend, especially if you're new. Yeah, most of it's just flanking, corner poking, and uh, finishing off weakened enemies. That's what the Predator's good for. It's, it is a very much a defensive assassin. And how it works in defense, I'll probably talk a little bit about it later, but yeah. Remember to try to flank, be sneaky, and don't be seen. Especially, and the, the ability really helps you, uh, helps you out with that. So, as I mentioned earlier, the ability is called Stalker Mode. And what Stalker Mode does is that it does turn you invisible. However, that's not the biggest benefit of the invisibility. Because just like with the Infiltrator, you're not 100% invisible. And, you know, enemies will still be able to spot you fairly easily, so try not to go right in front of people when you're using stalker mode you, you still want to be very sneaky with it however i will say this standing still helps your invisibility a lot because you know it's easy for people to see you when you're moving around in stalker mode so just keep that in mind try to you know not be in front of people but if you do have to hide somewhere and try to avoid uh try to avoid moving or even even turning the camera just try to avoid that that way you can increase your invisibility but yeah However, Stalker Mode, the primary uh, uh, help of that mode really isn't the invisibility. It's the heat vision that you get. It's just like, you know, the movie Predator. As you can see on the screen, all the enemies are highlighted in red, and it helps you see through walls. And that's the biggest benefit of Stalker Mode, is that you get the increased awareness of being able to see through walls and all that. However, I will tell you this right now, it does limit your field of vision, so if the, even if, if someone's a certain distance away from you, you won't be able to see them, period. Even if there's no wall between you and them, and like, say, normally like on a last eco or bazaar, you could see them from across the map, if you weren't in stalker mode. However, in stalker mode, you're not going to be able to see them because it does have a limited visual range, so... 
you really gotta make sh so obviously this is best good for close quarters but you know it's really great because you'll be able to see the people through walls you can see where they're gonna move you can predict what they're gonna do and that way you know you essentially you're stalking them that's why it's called stalker mode and also keeping that in mind uh you know if you have like a working microphone and well you know assuming that the voice communication thing gets fixed you can use this to spot out enemies for your team very easily so that's another benefit of the stalker mode is that you can kind of use this to scout out enemy positions and all that by the way stalker mode will last as long as you don't take damage you can still shoot use items dodge and hover and all that uh and you won't exit stalker mode however it goes into sort of a partial stalker mode every single time that you uh, shoot your weapons use items dodge hover or boost forward while stalker mode is active it'll decloak you and the heat vision will be turned off but you know you're still technically in stalker mode and after two or three seconds it'll uh, reactivate the heat vision and the invisibility but you know if you take damage of any kind like hell if you take even one point of damage, you'll be knocked completely out of stalker mode, and there's a 16 second cooldown. So, <coughs> keeping excuse me, keeping this in mind, you will best it's best to try to you know avoid taking damage while you're using stalker mode. The game of peekaboo while stalker mode is active is extremely extremely powerful, even though you should be doing this from the first from the get go. So what you can do is you can you know shoot one volley, dash behind cover quickly, wait a couple of seconds for you to recloak and have the heat vision engage, and then you can you know rinse and repeat and you corner poke that way and we're gonna move on to the prestige weapon which is blood mocked at rank 5 and yes it's my favorite weapon in the game the EOC repeater fortunately this does actually have kind of a comparison as far as the playstyle it actually plays very similar to the EOC infiltrator and if you have not seen my uh, uh, infiltrator video go watch that for a much more in-depth explanation on the EOC repeater because the EOC repeater is a very complicated weapon in itself and I don't want to have to use up time explaining the basics of a weapon. And I do that in depth on my Infiltrator video, and plus, you'll kind of get what I say about the playstyle of the EOC Infiltrator. So obviously this is a much more defensive playstyle of the Predator, even though the Predator is mostly defensive to begin with. However, with the Breacher and the T-32, you can play aggressively a little bit easier because they're shotguns and they're hitscan, and they're a little bit easier to use in that sense. However, yeah, the EOC Repeater, I mean, there's so many mines, uh, in effect, it is the highest burst damage output that you will get on the Predator. But again, this is very, very difficult to use. But most of the top Predators will usually tell you either the EOC Repeater or the Breacher is probably the best bet. Because the T-32, I mean, you know, if you like that style of weapon and you kind of like it, uh, I mean, go for it. I mean, I'll tell you why I... I mean, I kind of like the three T32, but I know I know why it's not the best choice because it's really awkward because how how the EOC repeater works, and of course, as you know, stalker mode. If you take any damage at all, including self damage, it'll knock you out of stalker mode. And if you, and the T32 only really works up at like point blank range, and at that range, you're going to be taking splash damage from your EOC predator at that point. But you know, which is why I don't think it works as well, because you know you're gonna, like at the range that the T32 works, you're going to be damaging yourself with your EOC Predator, and you don't want to have to use like one weapon or the other. In order to maximize any damage on any mech, you have to be able to use both the primary and the secondary weapon at the same time. But yeah, uh, as far as how the EOC Repeater itself works on the Predator, it gives your Predator much more uh, mid-range power because of you know it just has so many mines, and like the EOC Repeater is one of the better uh, mid-range weapons, that way you don't damage yourself with splash damage, and plus, uh, you know, I mean, their fall-off damage isn't that, it isn't too big, because the, most of their damage comes from the explosions themselves, so, uh, like, it increases with distance, it's, uh, the damage decrease with distance is not nearly as much as, like, a lot of the other weapons, like the Breacher. Uh, on the Breacher, I mean, you could try to snipe with the charge shot, however, you know, it loses so much of the damage along the way that it's just, you know, uh, it's not going to be nearly as good. But yeah, uh, the EOC repeater on the Predator does give it much more of a ranged option. However, you know, like the main, th it does have its weaknesses against aerial opponents again because, you know, uh, Breacher and the T-32 are hit scans, so it'll help you a little bit with aerial opponents. However, you know, both the EOC repeater and the EOC Predator have, uh, you know, the projectile weapons, so it's going to be harder to hit aerial opponents, and so you got to learn how to deal with that. I had to say, EOC Repeater on my Predator is easily my favorite setup because it's just got so much damage potential when you, you know, you're using corner playing and playing it defensively. Uh, yeah, that, that's why it's my favorite. You know, it'll just fill the floor with mines, and your enemies are just gonna be stepping all over them, which is just great. But yeah, and uh, going back to how the mine traps work is that again, 
in more defensive situations, if you know, if you have a good place for a mine trap, you want to try to cluster the mines close together. That way, they can do the most possible damage. The only the reason why you would want to spread them out is if you're going to have a hard time trying to hit an enemy, and you just want to make sure you hit them with the damage. I, that's when I'd say you spread out the mines. But for the most part, try to keep the mines tightly packed, and then in general, just detonate the mines or wait for them to step over, and then use your primary weapon to finish that your opponent off. It's great. It's you know. The predator is almost like a spider in that sense. It's best for it's the it's the best at laying traps. However, laying traps effectively is very very hard, and uh, I might make more much more of a guide on uh, how to lay traps and all that and good places for that. However, there's a couple pilots that I know called Miracle and uh, or Miraple. I don't know how to say his name. And Light Angel. Now those are the two guys who basically taught me how to play Predator. And they actually made this uh, online forum called the Ultimate Predator Guide on the Hawkins forums. And I'll leave a link in the description to that page below because it goes way more in depth on the Predator than I did in this video. And uh, I probably ever will be able to. But yeah, make sure you guys go check that out if you really are interested in the Predator from what I've told you and the basics on how, and like the very, very, very basics. Like I'm hardly scratching the surface on the Predator here and with this video. But yeah, that'll help you get much more in depth. I'll leave, again, leaving a link in this on the description, and I'll even post it on my forum page. So yeah, go check out that guide, and yes, you'll have to read it, but it is a very good read, and it'll definitely help you play Predator more so than this video. This video, like I said, it's hardly scratching the surface. And as always, to wrap up, I'll go over my items and internals. Items, and in items are the same, shield, repair charge, and the detonator. And the internals are, oh, there's only one difference, it's the shot coil, that way w when I'm in stalker mode I can jump off and not have to worry about fall damage knocking me out of stalker mode. But other than that, yeah again, same thing, evasive device and air compressor. That was my guide on the Predator, uh, again, that was basically barely scratching the surface, this is a very advanced mech so if you're new don't get it. But you know, if you guys want me to make more videos going more in depth on the Predator just let me know, but next time will be the G2 Raider, but for now this is Hobbs signing off.